Office workers of Reddit. Why do you hate that one co-worker so much? What does he she do? Cindy is a perpetual victim and manipulates situations to make herself a victim. She chooses to be miserable and wants everyone else to be miserable as well. At work, Cindy complains about everything and everyone to the supervisors. However, every single thing she complains about is something she is also guilty of doing. If we try to point that out to her, we are being mean to her. It's maddening. She also loves to specifically target individuals. For example, Cindy complained about someone not following the dress code to get that person in trouble. A memo went out to everyone reminding us of the rules. Cindy then started complaining about things she could no longer wear. Somehow Cindy is the victim. When I moved to a different cubicle, Cindy asked me if it was because of her. It had nothing to do with her. I told her no, not good enough. Cindy then went to the supervisor and cried about how I moved to a new cube because of her. The supervisor had to talk to me about it. Cindy made herself a victim. Cindy's recent target is a co-worker who reconciled with boyfriend and is really happy. We're not allowed to be happy. When that co-worker went on vacation, Cindy went to the supervisors with false accusations of her not doing her job. We tipped off the co-worker when she came back about Cindy's shenanigans and told her to ignore Cindy. Not good enough. Cindy's not getting enough attention over it so she's blocked the co-worker on Facebook and won't speak to her at work. However, Cindy is telling everyone the co-worker is mad at her. Cindy is the victim. Shut your pee hole, Cindy. You're a pathetic bully. You're not a victim. She has the thermostat in her office. She opens her window because it gets too hot. The cool air makes the thermostat think it needs to produce more heat, and roasts the rest of the office. I've talked to her about it multiple times and she does not understand the concept for some reason. Takes all calls on speakerphone. Spending significant time yelling can you hear me? Yep, yep. Everyone can hear you and wishes you'd use a headset or take a walk. He takes a tester bottle of cologne and sprays it all over. Neck, wrist, he unbuttons his shirt and sprays it in there. Then he coats his sweater in it. Eat my freaking lunch. We had a serial lunch thief too. And he was brazen about it. He was eventually fired when he graduated to stealing electronics. He plays his music aloud and doesn't use headphones. He'll only use headphones if he needs to tune out and get in the zone. I really need my hours. Goes home early every chance she gets. Arrives late. Calls into work. I don't know why I'm always doing task A. I want to do task B sometimes. When she gets put on task B. Wants to do task A again. And generally when she's on the job she's making some kind of careless mistake that gets everything behind schedule or is spending more time gossiping and socializing than she is actually working. Any actual work she does is the bare minimum. He kisses the site leads ass while he is here, takes him coffee, brings him lunch and stuff like that and then proceeds to talk mad crap about him when he leaves for the day telling everyone how he doesn't like him and he gets on his nerves and he doesn't know why he even talks to the guy. We had a woman like this in my department. It blew my mind when she got promoted up and out, and the superior she was ass kissing and insulting turned out to be one of her relatives who got her her job and helped her keep it. Nepotism in action. He starts every sentence with I and is the most self-centered person I've ever met. Also he won't turn off the stupid noise his phone makes when he is texting. That popping noise when you touch each key. Working in close quarters makes people petty and I'm not immune haha. The second someone leaves the room she starts whispering about them negatively. Can't stand people like that. He's an anal retentive. Condescending control freak. He volunteers his dumb ass for literally everything and then moans about having so much to do. And when he isn't doing that, he's trying to do my freaking job, too. And I'd let him if he wasn't such a patronizing, holier than thou frick about everything. By the way he talks to me and everyone else, my cube neighbor asked me if he was a manager. I laughed and said no, he has power over no one. He whines all the time that he can't get a girl, and to me it's obvious why. He's a narcissist and a prick and no one in the office likes to be around him. I like this comment because you can really feel the hatred. He only talks at this volume and I share a very small office with him. Connors me into irritating, time wasting conversations, 
which are really just him talking. Like many, if not most, when I started and first met him, I entered into the conversation thinking it would be a normal one. Instead in was a tedious, tortured monologue. However, he took this to mean that the new person was someone who would listen to him, so I was a favorite target for a long time. The last time he came to my office to talk to me, blocking the doorway, I eased my way past him as he was talking, spoke to him from outside my office and just said, I need to go. Everyone at work agrees that he means well and is pretty clearly on the autism spectrum. However, it is difficult to explain how stressful I find it to be caught in the conversational web of someone who obviously can't tell you aren't interested, don't have the time, and are becoming very uncomfortable. We have a couple of these in my office, I literally just walk away, I read an article about how to deal with it, my favorite is to stand up and start walking to their desk where they will follow you, then they naturally sit in their seat and you walk away, it's like magic. 3-4 times a day she'll page me at my desk and ask me about some dumb crap I have nothing to do with and know nothing about, as if I'm supposed to know. What's this envelope left here? On Saturday. 4. I- Matt, it's orange? It's got Saturday's date on it? You know anything about that? I don't know anything about that. Why don't you ask Matt? She uses sound cancelling headphones and sings along to whatever she is listening to, talks loudly to herself. And when she yawns she does it as loudly as she can. Nobody says anything to her because she has been with the company forever. She is completely oblivious to everything else going on. She will stroll into someone's cube to talk about the most random thing and not realize that we're on the phone or have headphones on or working with a sense of urgency. My boss had an urgent task for me one day. Something that needed to be completed in the next 15 minutes. I jumped right on it and he was walking back and forth between my desk and his to give me the right information. I'm dialing the phone when she walks into my cube. Do you know about this order and hands me a post-it with random numbers that looks like our order numbers? No, but I'll take a look at it. Just give me a few minutes. I'm trying to do something real quick for boss I continue dialing the number and she just starts talking about something written on my whiteboard. Oh, so and so was also working on that. Did you know that? It's about some parts that, and my boss slides around her to hand me some papers and then leaves to go get something else. We are working quickly, but she is completely oblivious. The phone is now ringing and she is still asking me questions and my boss is waiting on the edge of my cube. I finally say, hey, I've got to make this call. Thanks, and she just continues her sentence as she turns and walks down the hall to her desk, still talking to herself. He won't. Stop. Talking. I think he is genuinely afraid of silence. Like something happened in his childhood and now he can't stand more than 2 minutes without talking. I don't even reply anymore. I just sit there silent while he describes the objects closest to me. Oh look a notepad. That would be good if you needed to remember something you could write it down. Sometimes you don't need to write anything down. You can just remember it. But then again it's safer to write it down that way you don't forget. Every freaking shift with this guy. Staplers. Pens. Person wearing a hat. 2009 gag meme he found on Facebook. Anything. He won't be quiet. This is my mother-in-law. It is exhausting to be around her. When I first married my husband, I would get slightly irritated that he seemed to space out while I was talking sometimes. Now that I've spent a while around his mother, I definitely get it. I had one that had to tell me about every YouTube video he has seen every single day. Then he would proceed to quote the videos every single day. He also mispronounced words all the time. He would ask if I had seen the most recent trailer for an upcoming movie. He also would try to get my attention by calling my name no matter how busy I was or how much I tried to ignore him. If I did not reply he would just say it louder and louder. And louder. She doesn't know how to just be quiet and do her work. She feels it is absolutely necessary to tell the whole office how hungry she is, how her car is infested with ants, how her son has no common sense, etc. The list is endless and her constant complaints exhaust the frick out of me. She doesn't want to improve anything. She will vehemently fight any new initiatives and everything that in any way requires her to do something differently. Obviously she fought a hard and completely idiotic fight against digitalization. Trying to convince others that we should still print the sometimes 1000 page cases we have. 
Worst part about this is the fact that digitalization is government mandated and completely mandatory for everyone. What really gets me is when she refuses to learn something where it will already earn itself the first time she uses it. She will print out a whole case, min 300 pages, and do redacting by hand and then scan in everything. That can take hours sometimes several work days and a rainforest in paper. Now take Adobe's redacting program. You can do the same in maybe 30 minutes 1 hour. Learning to do it takes 3-5 minutes if you teach it to someone with a learning disability. Worst part is, it is deemed unsafe for personal information as redacting by hand sometimes leaves information on the paper. She still refuses. Also she will give handwritten notes to our student helpers for them to send it out. It is not directions which the student can then use to write their own letter. She spends longer handwriting the stuff than it would take her to write on her computer and send herself. Apparently the whole office would come to a grinding halt if Ama takes some days off. No you're not that good. You're just full of yourself and everyone hates you. He bikes 6 miles to work in the 100 degree Texas heat. Our office doesn't have a shower. So he comes in drenched in sweat as we're starting our stand-ups and demos. Smelling of foul sweat and B.O. He's been known to sweat directly on people since he air dries and it takes him a while to dry off. His B.O. is atrocious. He's so incompetent, the boss ends up spreading his work to everyone else. That's how I went from head of product to head of product and marketing. I haven't gotten a raise yet, but my boss is supposed to find the budget for it and deck. I'm really tempted to tell him to find the budget by firing that guy. Saw a bouquet of flowers and proceeded to have an allergic reaction to them. They were fake. He sends emails to everyone in the department on the shared workstation using all caps and leaves the caps lock on. We have case sensitive passwords to log into the system. I work in HR. When we have people coming in for an interview my colleague talks first to them escorts them to my office. We have a lot of people coming in where I before the interview. But god damn it Melissa, if I have an appointment on 3, don't send them to my office at 2.30. Tell them to wait, give them coffee or a drink, but don't make me put up with all that while I don't even have the files in my office. You ruin my whole schedule. There's a guy I work with who, while very nice and polite, has more annoying habits rolled into one person than anyone I've ever seen. Taken individually they aren't too bad, and I realize describing them that they seem petty, but they add up over the days and years I've worked with him. He prides himself on efficiency but spends a day and a half writing out step by step instructions that amount to run a search. Literally, 52 individual steps. He frequently wastes more time trying to come up with more efficient methods than actually working. His methods are rarely more efficient, or not more efficient enough to justify the time spent coming up with them. He's a nexus of ambient noise. In a quiet office you'll hear him at various times tapping his ring on his coffee cup, drumming his fingers, huffing loudly, talking to himself and slapping himself. Yes, slapping himself, likely mind you, while the rest of us drink coffee or soda to stay awake. He apparently is immune to caffeine. Instead, he eats microwave popcorn and drinks hot water. We have to explain to new people that when he says ugh, it's gonna be a popcorn day. It means he's tired and popcorn is a stimulant. He uses the phrase better living through chemistry every single time anyone takes an aspirin or takes cough medicine. He never rounds up or down when discussing time. I've got to leave today at 4.47pm to catch the bus. He calls his yogurt yogi. When he finishes eating his yogi, he stares into the bottom of the cup and quietly mumbles to himself yum, yum, yum. He's 59 years old. He loudly chomps on carrots and celery all day every day. He calls it his rabbit food and says he has to eat continuously to keep the furnace going. This guy sounds awesome. It's almost as if he was born to embody all the most obscure and ever so mildly infuriating traits that only get under your skin when taken as a total. And the best part is that you can't even ask him to stop without listing a dozen things and coming off as the world's most petty butthole who takes issue with his every last attribute. What a legend. He's slurping his spaghetti right now as I type this. Even with headphones and music playing I can hear it. GRRRR. Although he is not my boss directly, he is kind of an elder statesman of the department and very well respected. For whatever reason, he feels the need to make me uncomfortable every time our paths cross. He often says things about what I'm wearing, 
such as, what do you have on your feet, just normal boots, by the way, and heaven help me when we have lunch at the same time in the lunchroom, it's non. Stop personal questions and humiliating comments, everyone laughs along with him, too, which is really annoying, I just wait until very late to have my lunch now, so I am just alone in the room, I have no idea why I am his target, I'm the most senior woman in the division, but still I am not very far up and would never be in line to get his job, on top of it all, he steals my utensils from the lunchroom, we all bring our own, because he likes them sleeps at his desk, knowingly takes too long to do the same task he's done for over 10 years, won't let you help to speed things along, thinks he's smarter than everyone, reheats fish in the lunch room, constantly blabs non-work related subjects at people and won't stop even when they clearly are ignoring him and doing their work, like they'll start a phone call and he's still talking at them minutes after their call started, worst offense he does, he stinks. Like he can't understand his particular body type cannot go a single day without a proper shower. He has an actual area of effect that is measured by cubicles. On bad days he hit up to 5 plus cubicles away. Ground zero was miserable. The stank was almost a solid wall of reek. He was spoken to numerous times and eventually management went with a solution of moving him next to people who just suffered in silence and never reported him. We actually had several stinkers and most of them ended up being moved there. Stench row was a thing. I no longer work in an office but from past experience it is. Stinks. There's a saying that goes there are two types of job. One you shower before, and the other you shower after. I just wish some of the filthy suckers I shared an office with even showered at all. If you're in a room with 30 other people all day, throwing more aftershave onto your stink is going to make people very, very annoyed at you. Oh, and brush your freaking teeth once in a while, if you must eat dog turd, which I assume is what has been going on, because no living human's mouth should smell like that. It's not even early, you start at 9 and live 30 minutes away, you slovenly frick, and you smell like you've just got out of fricking bed and put on last week's old shirt, then rolled around in a pile of festering garbage. They're always the ones that insist on either whispering to you, or coming within close proximity to you. The nice smelling ones are always too far away. I had this co-worker once who would always bring in a Tupperware of white rice. Nothing wrong with that, except she would eat the rice one grain at a time at a totally disproportionate decibel level. She would chomp, slap, and smack up each grain of rice and her cheeks would bulge out like she was eating a lot of food, but it was just a single grain. It would take her nearly a whole hour every day to get through all her rice. She would talk while her mouth was full too. It was a visual and audio nightmare. She didn't chew and swallow one grain at a time. She put one grain in her mouth at a time, but it didn't swallow. Gathering dozens of single rice grains in her mouth one at a time, but continuously adding more one by one. Even when she only had just put in the first rice grain, she still puffed out her cheeks like she was chewing a lot of food. So when she'd talk with her mouth full, it was from her putting rice into her mouth. One grain by one grain. I've never seen anyone eat like that. It was distracting. This is Diamond Spongebob he only appears every 200,000 videos subscribe for good luck. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.